Hello. Uh, I mentioned wire wrapping in a previous video, and it's something I've been meaning to do an article on for some time, as it's a technique that used to be extremely common, probably from the 60s through the 80s. It was one of the commonest techniques for prototyping, and it was also used for production, uh, such as backplanes for uh, mainframe and mini computers, uh, to interconnect the various small logic cards they used at the time. It's a very simple technique, but it is extremely reliable and very easy to do if you get the basic tools, which the only really essential thing is a little hand tool like this, which costs a few pounds or a few dollars. It's um, a WSU30M, this one, um, 30 gauge being to suit the Y size, and an M for a modified wrap. I mean, that's an example of a prototype computer board. Uh, built uh, in the early 90s. The ICs are dated around um, 92, so it's probably about 92, 93. Uh, you can see the, the fitting density for the parts. You can pretty much touch the sockets against each other on minimal spacing. Um, the wire connections excuse me, are direct pin to pin. There's no external space needed for tracks or uh, pads to solder wires from above. It's just uh, using a, a prototyping board that's got some power tracks built in for convenience to uh, make short connections to. But other than that, all the connections are through wire app. And that's an, another example. It's an I.O. board from the same system. It has had a couple of bits nicked, but... Uh, it's the same, same principle, same contact. You can see the, the that was a bit damaged as well. Huh? Um, the wire or wires are just uh, taken through between the ICs or through the cent down the centre of the ICs, um, but the pins are still accessible. And it's uh, it's very effective. It's a very good joint. It's um, it's something you wouldn't expect from the way it works. Now, let me just zoom in a bit. Uh, you able to see the pins better. It's I'm just just about to start building the board for something. The wire. So this is it's actually originally called mini wrap because it's a finer wire than the original system. And it's 30 AWG, so it's 0.25 millimeter diameter. And wire wrapping wire is normally silver plated, and the commonest type has a Kynar insulation which is fairly heat resistant, it strips very easily. The tool just has a, a fine slot that uh, cuts through the insulation. Um, the cutter blades, you can temporarily grip it to pull it into the slot and then just pinch it and it cuts the end, leaving a piece of white, the, white, the right length. That threads down a slot in the tool. The insulation just pushes in a few millimetres as well. You can just see that the other notch. You put the tool over a pin and turn it. And you just spin it with your fingertips, it doesn't take much force at all. A few turns and that leaves a wire up joint. See there's a, about half a dozen turns of wire around it and a couple of turns of insulated wire at the base, which form a strain relief. So it's also quite uh, vibration resistant. Uh, the surprising thing is, despite it being so simple, the joints have incredibly low contact resistance because as the wire is pulled sideways out of the slot in the tool, and then at the same time being pulled around square corners on the uh, wire up pins, the contact force at each corner uh, exceeds 50,000 pounds per square inch. It's enough to cause the metal to deform and flow and uh, marginally form a spot weld. It's certainly a gas tight joint that will not tarnish or corrode internally. Um, the joints actually go down with re in resistance over time as the contact is so tight metal tends to diffuse across and uh, improve the connection. And 
Just four turns of wire, which a normal tool gives rather more than that, gives a contact cross-section larger than the wire itself. So again, uh, very low resistance, less than a milliohm to start with, and it may drop over time. And removal is just as easy if you need to change anything. Though, in, when, you, when you're actually building boards, you can stack two joints onto each pin if needed, or even three if you're careful. No, it's, it's best to stick to two. Uh, any changes, use the other end of the hand tool, just spin it back a couple of times. The wire is uh, wire spiral is swelled out. And just uh, expands away from the pin. And you can uh, reuse it. Oh, not, the, not the bit of wire, but reuse the pin. This is a, quite a new tool, it's just a little bit stiff and iron still, it's not been worn in much yet. Let's do that again so you can get a better look. I'm doing it a bit slower because I'm part of looking at the uh, camera screen as well, rather than looking at what I'm doing to ensure I'm in photo in, in the shelf. Uh, so I've done this once already and I completely missed everything that was off the top of the screen. <laughs> so I'm making sure I can see what I'm doing this time. Um, but I mean, when you're actually wiring, you route the wire through to whatever pin you want. Leave just a little bit for the uh, routing. Got a bit of, hmm, difficult. Got a bit of uh, stuff stuck in the tool then. Didn't want to strip. Easily fixed. And the same white root, root it through to have a pin you want to be on. Put down the other end and again just wind it on. Of uh, insulation in there. There are various other types of tools used in mass production as well. This is the simplest one and the cheapest one. This is probably the next commonest. This is a, a semi automatic hand tool. It's just a, it's a bit like um, a Yankee screwdriver, spiral screwdriver. There's a spiral mechanism in the body, uh, kind of. Uh, Worm uh, driven by teeth on the end of the handle, and it has a fixed sleeve, full length fixed sleeve, and the tool tip rotates inside if you can get the right right to see it. And the the principal operations are exactly the same. Strip the wire, feed it in. I'm looking at the screen and I'm looking at what I'm doing. But, uh, because it's a, a solid outer of this tool, you can't see how far it's got in. But, uh, you can feel when you put the wire in how it's right, gone. Put the wire on the pin. Squeeze the handle. Remove the tool. And that gives just the same joint as the basic hand tool. And I've also got a battery one, which is a bit bulky and I'd never really it easily in the view because I've got the camera zoomed in so much. Um, commercially there are fully powered ones, air driven. Uh, um, all, uh, when it was in very common use for production, there are also CNC machines uh, for wiring back planes and such that could uh, wire you know, thousands of wires an hour. Uh, into whatever pattern they'll program into. And because all the pins are on a, on a set grid, of course, it, it lends itself quite well to automated production. 
uh, CNC positioning a bit and just uh, putting the wire on, turning it. But, uh, anyway, uh, I hope that's been some interest and uh, you may find it useful if you're doing any really complex projects. And I still use it occasionally, as I say, this is one of the little process about them uh, just uh, setting out, which uh, may appear in another project. Anyway, thanks for watching and any questions let me know.